Let's talk about the domain and range of an exponential graph. We'll start with domain. Remember that domain is all about the horizontal direction, so it's about how far left and how far right. So let's look to the left. To the left, this graph could probably go all the way to negative infinity, and to the right, it could also keep going to positive infinity. Notice that there are no lines that are going to try to stop that graph from moving. And so the domain is all x values. And so we represent that as follows. Let's talk about the range. So the range is all about the y values. So it's about the lowest and the highest y values. So the lowest y value for this exponential graph, well, it's trying to go... It can, well, it, it's trying to go lower, but it cannot ever go underneath that dotted line. So the lowest y value that it can get to, or get close to rather, is 1. So it never becomes 1, but it can get very close. And then the highest that it could ever get to is infinity. So it goes from 1 all the way to infinity, but 1 is not included. So we represent that as follows. There we go. So that's fairly simple. So we'll now try one or two examples. So let's start with number one. The domain for any exponential graph is always going to be all real numbers. And then the range is always going to be from the asymptote up or from the asymptote down. So this one is going to go from this asymptote as its lowest up to positive infinity. But remember, it can never touch the asymptote. So we'll never use a square bracket, only a round bracket. And so for number one, that will be as follows. Let's try number two. So once again, the domain is going to be all real numbers. And then if we look at the range, well, now it's slightly different. The highest value for this high, um, exponential graph is two. And the lowest value goes all the way down to negative infinity. So it's going to go from 2 to negative infinity. So that will be represented as follows. And now we can try the last one. So once again, the domain will be all real numbers. And the range starts at 2 and goes up to infinity, but does not include 2. Exponential graphs do not have any axes of symmetry. There is nowhere where you could cut this graph in half where the two halves would be mirror images of one another. I'll leave that with you to think about for a bit, but you will soon see it that there is no possible way for this graph to have an axis of symmetry. Exponential graphs do have asymptotes. You have seen that by now. And so for this asymptote, or for this exponential graph, you can see the asymptote there at y equals to 1, and so that is the asymptote. So this is something that you are quite familiar with already. So let's just try a few examples. So these we don't even have to draw out. For number 1, we can see that it is an exponential graph that has been moved one place up, so the asymptote is 1. This one over here, number 2, doesn't have anything over there, so I'm just writing plus 0. So the asymptote is still there. Remember, it, it hasn't been taken away. It just, it simply is the x-axis. And so if you are asked to give the equation, you would say y is equal to zero. Or you could say, oh no, you won't say the x-axis. What I meant was, you, you have to say y equals to zero. But just for your understanding, that is the x-axis. And then for this one, obviously y would equal to 7. So let's just complete that. For the first one, it's going to be y equals to 1. For the second one, y equals to 0. And for the third one, we get an answer of y equals to 7. And the last part will be the reflections and translations of exponential graphs. So here we have a graph, an exponential graph, that is y equals to 2 to the power of x plus 1. It gets reflected in the y-axis. Remember, a reflection in the y-axis means that it's going to jump over the y-axis. And so, is it the x values or the y values that change? It's the x values. Whenever I say that, I hope you guys understand that. Just think about it. If you have a point of a year, let's say its coordinates are 1 and 2, and you move it to this side, well, those coordinates are going to be minus 1 
and 2. So the y values stay the same, but the x values become the complete opposite of what they were. So if you reflect about the y-axis, then all the x values have to change. And so we'll simply go to the equation and modify all the x values. Now we're going to reflect about the x-axis, that's when all the y values change. So we simply go to the equation and change all the y values. But then remember, you're not allowed to leave the equation with a y that is negative. So we simply divide by minus 1, so every term has to switch. So this term is going to become negative, and this term is going to be negative. Another way of thinking about this is if you wanted to make this y positive, you would move it to this side and each of these terms would have to go to the left where their sign would have to change. That's the other way of thinking about it. So let's write out the completed form of that question. Question C, translated three units to the right and five units up. So that'll just modify your, you'll just modify the equation to show the three units or five units up, you're just gonna add five to that one and then three units to the right. Remember with graphs that affects your x values and so you've got to go to wherever x is in the equation, which is over here. And when you move to the right, do you say plus 3 or minus 3? Remember, when you're moving left and right, you actually have to say minus 3 to show that you're moving to the right. And so the new equation for that is going to be as follows. And then what we can do is just modify the or simplify the 1 plus 5 as 6. And there we have the new equation for number 1c. And the last part of this is the graph must first be reflected in the x-axis and then translated four units to the left and one unit down. So let's take the answer from b, which was the answer that we got when we reflected it in the x-axis. So here we have the reflected in the x-axis form and then we need to translate it. Four units left and one unit down. So remember the one unit down, that's just going to modify this part. And then four units to the left is your x shift, so that's going to modify there. Always remember when you're shifting left and right, it's opposite to what you would think. So four units to the left, we're going to have to say x plus four. And so we can write the new equation as follows. So notice there we have added the x plus 4 to show that it's 4 units to the left and then we said the minus 1 but now these two minus 1's can simplify as minus 2 and so the final equation is the following so there we can see the final equation and that is the end of this video